Good morning and welcome to Fairleigh Dickinson University's UN Pathways video conference series. We're pleased to have with us today Mr. Andy Rydell, Political Affairs Officer of the Office of the High Representative for Disarmament. He will be broadcasting from UN headquarters in New York City. We are joined by partner universities and high schools, Lock Haven University, Mercy College, Montclair High School, and Lehigh University. Welcome to all of you. Uh, just to outline the ground rules for you, uh, we will be uh, having uh, initially a conversation between Ambassador Ahmad Kamal from UN headquarters and our guests. Uh, after their conversation, we will proceed to a question and answer period, and we will rotate through uh, the participating institutions. Two questions, please, uh, from each site. Uh, you should know that we are recording this uh, for posterity and educational purposes, so please do not say anything that you do not want to be on YouTube for the rest of your lives. Uh, I turn matters now over to Ambassador Kamal at UN headquarters. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have as our distinguished panelist, Mr. Rydell, who is an old friend of Fairleigh Dickinson University and of the whole programs of the Ambassadors Club and a, a pillar in the disarmament uh, department which has now changed its name to the High Representative for Disarmament in, in, at the United Nations. Uh, we are going to be discussing outer space which is a totally new vista for most of us. Uh, it's a new vista because we have a definition of membership in the world and that membership definition is what is called the nation state. Nation states are the units on which the structure of the world is based and nation states are defined among other things by their borders. Their borders are partly land borders and partly sea borders the sea border used to be three miles off the land, has, was then expanded to 12 miles, and in some cases to exclusion zones going up to 200 miles off the land. But we still have problems in the sea because of the continental shelf and because of the definition of how far one can spread in, uh, in, into the sea. But the third part of the sovereignty of the state was the air, that's a land, sea, and air. And normally, the air above the land and the sea was considered part of the sovereignty of the state. And then something happened. And that is why, for example, you could not overfly any country without getting specific overflight permission from that country because an overflight was a use of the sovereign territory of that country. And then something happened. And that something was outer space. In other words, the air above countries was artificially divided, arbitrarily and artificially divided into two layers. One layer which is called uh, the atmosphere, and therefore part of the sovereignty of state. And above that, a second layer, which is now being called outer space, on which the sovereignty of state does not exist. And so this outer layer, which is uh, outer space, is a sort of a wild west, with no rules, no frontiers, free for all, and a lot of damaging developments which have taken place because of the jungle that it is. Now those developments are of two types. Some of them are man-made and some of them are nature-made. And we need to differentiate between the two. The man-made problems of outer space are, first of all, the question of sovereignty and privacy. Anybody can put a satellite up in outer space and these satellites now have the ability to identify the uh, number plate of your car from outer space 
And so they can identify my car from yours or you from me. People are identifiable. Their face structures are identifiable from outer space. And that invasion of privacy or non-existence of privacy extends not just to the visible spectrum, that is to say sight during daytime light, but also sight during darkness. Because with infrared rays from outer space, you can identify human beings even and their actions even at night. So please do not go out on the roofs of your buildings at night thinking you can indulge in erotic pastimes because outer space big brother is watching you from outer space. That's privacy. The second man-made problem is the militar militarization of outer space. You can put not just spy satellites, but military satellites. You can put arms in outer space. And you can put any types of arms. Uh, uh, Mr. Rydell will walk us through uh, the, the limitations on arms. But who knows? You can put laser weapons, for example, in outer space. You can put, uh, put uh, uh, missiles in outer space. You have enormous capacities of doing things because of the relative secrecy. All that you know is that there's some sort of an object. But the specifics of that object in outer space are a matter of closely guarded secrecy in the military sphere. And so we do not know, we do not know exactly what is out there in outer space, let alone these peaceful uh, civilian satellites, certainly not the military satellites in outer space. So that is point number two. Then you have a lot of junk in outer space because people are going there and they are letting uh, everything out, whether, whether it is used cans uh, or used cigarette butts or other unmentionables which are thrown out into the outer space. And there are tens of thousands of objects now in outer space. And please note, that these satellites, including the orbiting satellites, which are manned satellites, are, go, are turning around in outer space at very high speed. They're doing 18,000, 20,000 miles per hour. And so the speed at which they are going, a small object, even a, a piece of uh, an eraser, can be working like a bullet if it hits you, and if you are traveling at that speed. And so, the amount of junk and the dangers of that junk for satellites which are expensive and for human beings in those satellites which are even more expensive is a very real danger. Now these are the man-made parts of outer space. You do have the natural parts of outer space and the natural parts of outer space are the asteroids. The asteroids which are spinning around in space and which, because they are losing gravity, are so, or being pulled in by gravity, are slowly coming towards Earth. And so we are almost sure that we've had asteroids hitting the Earth in the past. And we know the, the, the Tunguska incident, the Gulf of Mexico incident, etc. And so we know that we have been hit by uh, asteroids coming from outer space and, and now uh, somehow the screen is shunting around between the different uh, uh, be between the different university sites and I think people should know that we are using a voice activated switch so if you talk or make noise anywhere 